Welcome to the Reality Revolution. I'm your host, Brian Scott. Always overjoyed to return to Quo. And today we're going to go over a couple of channelings where they ask about demons and negative entities. The history of the Law of One material indicates that a negative entity attacked the group to try to stop it to channel. And so Carla is also channeling in this. And so there's some interesting information that comes about as you understand how you'll find an opposition from negative entities in certain situations and how to deal with it. We begin in 2020 when a question was asked, what are demons? How did these beings become so separated of the love and the purpose of the creator? Quo says, I am Quo and I'm aware of the query, my sister. Those entities that are seen as demons are usually the projected thought forms of negatively oriented entities that utilize such thought forms in the attempt to control or to bring terror to certain entities so that they perhaps open themselves to further negative polarization. If they're unable to correctly perceive the nature of the demon, negatively oriented entities utilize such thought form projections in order to control certain entities through the concept of fear. The fear of these demons then is seen as that which could be ameliorated or removed by the negative entity for the object of its desire to control the entity that is sending the demon to bring fear to. Thusly, the demon is that quality that has been constructed by the negative entity after ascertaining the kind of being a certain third density entity may find a reaction of fear to. Therefore, the demon is, shall we say, personally constructed for a particular mission for not only a certain entity, but a certain type of entity. Usually the weaker minded entity that is unable to look beyond the demon and see that it is a creature of the one infinite creator in its ultimate reality. And when there is love and light transmitted to it from the entity that was full of fear for it, then there is the transmutation of the demon within the mind of the entity instead of fear. This is a means by which the entity that was the object of the demon and the object of the negatively oriented entity's effort to control then is able by calling to a higher power to move itself beyond the level of the negatively oriented entity and the demon and to shower both with love and the light of the one infinite creator that is heartfelt for there is within this entity then the feeling that the one creator is the ultimate type of resource that all seekers of truth may call upon to deal with any demon or any perceived negativity within the life experience. The negativity is that which is produced by the path of that which is not, that is the path of negativity, which cannot long endure within the octave of experience. As we mentioned in the previous query, each positively oriented entity then that comes in contact with any type of negative experience or demonic presence may within the meditative state shower this entity or presence then the love and the light that it channels from the one infinite creator through its open heart to negatively oriented entity blessing it on its way as it then begins to see that there is the one creator existing in all of the creation within any demon within any negatively oriented entity and especially within the self and will aid the self in seeing the nature of the reality of the one creator that exists within all. I begin with this because it's a very important teaching. Negative entities only go after people that are ignorant of the reality of the situation. They're scared to death of you because you now know the secret. They're going to try to scare you, but if you have the ability to send love to it, through your open heart, you can stop it in its tracks. This is fundamentally the most powerful thing that you can do. Your first instinct is, I must stop it. I must kill this demon, right? But that demon is you. That demon is a part of the one creator. So imagine that this demon is like your grandmother, somebody that you love. And then for a moment, send love to this creature and it will depolarize that demon or negative entity and so somebody on the path of service to self, if you showered them with love, it completely depolarizes them and makes them start all the way back at the very beginning. So once you've now understood the game and the power that you have with this love, you can do anything. 
It's implied in the law of one material. The earth is protected by these guardians, higher beings who are probably just us in the future. And when a negative being comes to the earth, if you shower it with love, it's stopped in its tracks. Nothing can get through it. So you have this one power that you may not have known of because it's very hard to understand. But Quo goes into a further detail about this, starting in a channeling in 2009. Jim asks, As we seek to know ourselves and know the truth on this journey, there frequently occurs for the seeker an oppositional force, either an entity or an essence, that is of a negative nature. We are wondering how Quo would suggest that we attempt to understand this negativity, whether an essence or an entity, and how to address it, how to approach it, how to respond to it. Carla Channeling says, We are those known to you as the principle of Quo. We greet you in the love and the light of the one infinite creator in whose service we come to you this evening. Thank you for calling us to this session of working and thank you for creating this circle of seeking for carving out, sometimes in very difficult circumstances, the time and the energy to seek the truth. As this instrument would say, you are awesome and the beauty that you hold together as you share each other's auras and build up a sacred space is stunningly beautiful. We are so privileged to be part of this meditation. As always, we would ask that each of you hears or reads these words, use your discrimination and discernment in choosing those avenues of thought you wish to pursue, which may have been discussed by us. We thank you for this consideration, for your care in sorting out what is yours from what is not yours enables us to share our humble opinions with you without being concerned that we might infringe upon your free will. You asked this evening, my friends, about those experiences of resistance or opposition or disturbance that seem sometimes to stand in front of one on a path of seeking and say, go no further. The nature of your query is unique in our experience in that each of those within this circle is dealing with a spiritual path which has great depth. For many who are beginners upon the path of seeking, there is seen not the vertical aspect of seeking, but the horizontal. If we may use that figure, it does not hold precisely, but it works in as much as we might say that it is possible to pursue a path of seeking that is seen as a journey from point A to point B to point C and so forth, as though it were walking across firm ground or riding across the level of the sea in a horizontal manner. To those, we would answer in one way. This evening, however, we feel we are speaking with those who are experiencing the collapsing of boundaries, and at the same time the releasing of boundaries, so that in one way it seems that all levels of the creation have come together in one focus, and in other ways it seems that all of the levels of creation are spreading themselves like peacock's tails to express, in more and more detail, the unbelievable nuances possible and the great variety of points of awareness which are held in simultaneous fashion in one fragile instrument of the Creator such as each of you is. Thusly, we shall answer in a different way, in a way in which we attempt to help you look at not only what may be opposing, distracting, or offering resistance to you, but also who you are and what your points of perception may be that cause such and such a limitation a resistance, or a distraction to surface before your near vision. We speak to those whose hearts are pure, whose intention is set upon the pilgrim's path. We salute you individually and collectively, for you have broken through that which is of the world to see with eyes that look for love, that hope to give love, that are able to recognize the love that is the heart and soul of every essence and entity within this creation of love. We continue with the theme of that love which you are and ask you to reflect upon the simple point that all love is an outreaching and in that capacity shows already the fundamental character of acceptance. So how comes it, you may ask, that experiences arise in which you find yourself confronted with that which is deemed unacceptable, ugly, horrible, and most damaging to one's abiding desire to embrace those around one with an open heart. For it is true that the path of every seeker will find such stumbling blocks. It is true that every seeker finds within himself those experiences which do not smack of love, 
which are potentially so frightening that one feels it no longer safe to set foot upon the path of seeking, so that one would rather find safety and haven in some of the many distractions that offer themselves to one's experience. Whence come these terrors, one asks, and what may one do in the face of them to find a way that permits a continuation along one's path of seeking? As a first step, we suggest that one may examine the question of one's own desire, for desire, my friends, is life seeking is love, and it carries its energies forward into a world of common experience, originally in quite an innocent way, but one's desire often encounters impediments, resistance, and frustration. And many times these impediments are imposed by expectations on the part of others who one loves and who one feels also return that love. One discovers then that to follow the course suggested by a desire one has would be unacceptable. And therefore one learns from a young age that desire itself can be a risky venture and should never be entered into wholeheartedly or with full fledge. One easily learns to build into the very structure of one's desire a resistance to that desire, which can express in very many different ways. What happens then is that the desire itself is not fully quenched, but rather finds alternative means, secret and subterranean, of expressing the life energy which has already been dedicated in them. This, my friends, is energy of the Creator and is never, never to be despised. Yet so often one finds that it is precisely its fate. It is despised even if by the one to whom it most closely belongs. Most who have lived within the kind of experience of third density which you now enjoy are well familiar with this kind of circumstance, and most have had to accommodate for it in their daily lives in some fashion or another. There are some cases, however, in which the experience of a pocket of a kind of rejected desire or energy is of such strong nature that it can seem to acquire a life of its own and can turn on the one whose desire it is into forms that beggar the imagination in terms of range and type of representation. These forms are often dreamlike and can take on proportions that seem to be quite threatening and of a nature alien to the one beset by them. The practice of reintegrating that which is perceived as outer with that which you perceive as inner is one of the fundamental practices of the seeker along the path back to oneness with the Creator. That which is perceived as inner and that which is perceived as outer on the one hand are very, very real. The monsters in the night exist. They exist because you interact with them. They exist because they give to the perceiver a presence of tangibility. You see them with the eyes of your body or the eyes of your mind and therefore they take on a reality in your life. On the other hand, these monsters of the night are merely empty perceptions of the mind holding no real form or ultimate reality. It is only their impact that becomes real. You perceive yourself as real. Each of those in this circle of seeking sees him or herself as an I, with a mind and individuality. And when you perceive a self, it is then easy to perceive an other self. You each hold an identity of self and claim those things which you believe belong to the self, the traits of your being, that composite of thoughts and memories and mannerisms that form the being that you call yourself. Those things which you do not wish to integrate into that perception of self are often ignored or rejected. It is as if you choose those things which you make yourself and those things which you will choose to make another self and reject. But since this is ultimately impossible within the creation, when you go deeper than the surface level of being and start to travel the path of a seeker and wish to know yourself entirely, those things which you have chosen as not of yourself start to reveal themselves. The shadows of the mountain that were not hidden with the sun begin to appear around the climax of the mountain. You see crags and pinnacles arising out of the darkness around you and say, what is this that has appeared on my side? It is not part of me, but lo, you go deeper into the mountain and realize that each of these rocks and crevices are part of the same mountain. They are part of self. The snows fall on the entirety of the mountain alike. The one known as L2 spoke earlier about the needing to love the self in order to love that which is perceived as other self. This is a concept that has been spoken of in many terms in your culture. One must love self before loving others. It holds especially true when one looks 
at it in this context, for that which is perceived as other self is also self. And when one loves the self fully, that love trickles down deeper and deeper into the roots of self, where one perceives that that love then is spread out to those things once thought of as other selves, which are actually also part of the same self. As the seeker penetrates deeper along what was earlier described as the vertical, that which is seemingly far away becomes nearer again. Again, we use the illustration of a mountain to carry our point. Starting at the pinnacle of the mountain, one can look out at the points of other mountains in a mountain range. Perhaps from this perspective, there are clouds between the mountains so that one standing on the peak of a mountain can see other mountains and clouds between the mountains and think of the mountain the seeker is standing on as one mountain and that mountain in the distance as a different mountain. But one penetrating deeper and deeper into the roots of self connects all other selves. And the distance between one mountain and the other mountain seems less of a separation and more of a continuity with all of the other mountains in the range. Again, to circle back to the concept of love and apply that to this illustration, the seeker brings the love down with him or herself into the roots of self, loving the self deeper and deeper in its entirety. When one reaches the base of the mountain below the clouds and sees the connection with all of the other mountains, that love spreads and grows to all of the other mountains until it encompasses the entirety of the planet, shall we say, if we may use that image as a metaphor for all of creation. The one known as Carla spoke earlier of feeling a pain so intense that she may as well encompass the pain of the rest of humanity and heal all others' pain. She used the tool of her own suffering to penetrate the roots of herself so that she could see a connection with the entirety of other selves. In this instance, she was given the gift of oneness, Connecting between self and all other selves, it is often when confronted with those monsters, whether they be pain, bad dreams, or the monsters under the bed, that we are given the opportunity to go beneath the surface self, deeper into the one being that one sees in the mirror to the one being at the center of creation. We would like to draw attention to the fact that within the one creation that connects us all, there have been created many different levels. Beings have stepped themselves down through various levels in order to gain all the experiences of life. There are fragments of the Creator and, in essence, of yourself that are operating on different frequencies on different stairs of the staircase. These stairs all lead to one point, and yet one may find that they can move amongst the stairs and that various fragments from higher steps on the stairs may journey down into a vibration so different from that with which you are familiar that you are often not capable of recognizing these fragments as your fellow creation in this current density. There are parts of yourself that are so distanced from yourself that they could, in the terms that you know, be considered a separate entity, and it is possible for these entities of different vibration to interact, to mingle with your vibration, on a level that differs from the resistance put up by the immediate subconscious of an individual. The possibility of negative entities that have throughout the eons been deemed as demons, as monsters exist on various levels of existence and are capable of interacting with individuals in this density on a level that can be fully disturbing and very distracting. If we may liken the creation as a body, if one part of the body is hurt or experiencing flux, all of the attention of the body is drawn to the area experiencing that particular distortion. All concentration is put upon the said area. This is what happens when one entertains the fear in one's own heart, when one does not clear the levels of the immediate self in order to open the heart. They then draw forth like attention. If you constantly think about the things that you fear, the things that you dread, if you constantly worry that you will encounter resistance, it will come. This is your inner creator at work, the creator that does not know such infinite power and yet has the very real ability to create the emotions on which you fixate your mind, that being who continuously brings focus upon outside fears without first tending to his own heart is creating the call for all those fears to be manifest. 
When you open the heart and send out the call of love, you will find that not only are you met with a love response, but that love penetrates the darkness that you so fear, that it creates ripples in the pond that go farther than most in this density are even capable of imagining. As the seeker moves into these areas of opposition, confusion, and difficulty, there's often the temptation either to cease the journey or to become disheartened and feel a failure. These are normal responses, my friends. There is no shame in feeling them. But this is a portion of your tempering, shall we say, as a spiritual vessel which seeks to hold the highest vibrations and to reflect these vibrations to the creation about you. For you interact with all that there is. And how you interact is a product of your own choosing. Eventually, each seeker will find there's great benefit to the self in sharing heartfelt love with each portion of the creation, including those portions that seem negative in relation to the self, especially in the interaction with the self. Yet to share the open heart and the unconditional love that is found therein with the negatively oriented entities is but half the journey that needs to be taken to find respite and relief. The other half we would suggest is to build that armor of light about yourself with as much fervor as the love that has been sent from the heart from this armor of light is that which provides a safe haven for the self that has encountered the difficulty from without. For through it can be said there is an entire universe contained within the self that has both the positive and negative experiences and entities, yet it has been said, as above, so below, as within, so without. When this armor of light has been constructed, then the seeker that desires to be free of the opposition of negative sources is so both from within and without, as is the intention of the seeker. Know that you have the power of the Creator within you. You have all things within you. Thus the power of your ability to create is total. That which is believed within the heart and the mind and the soul of the seeker is that which is true for that seeker. Thus as you search your heart, your mind and your soul for those portions of the self that attract or repel any other source of energy or opposition, you also find the ability to secure the self in safety from the deleterious sources of energies or entities. Perhaps you've noticed, my friends, that as the various instruments in this circle have spoken, they have often repeated these words, love and light. As you walk the tightrope across the abyss of chaos, which is all that is perceived in this distortion, there's a balance beam for each self that is love and light. As entities pursue the spiritual path, they begin to discover there are many points from which to perceive. Rare indeed is the seeker who is able to ascend that staircase of various vibratory ranges from which perception proceeds, all of which are couched and nested within your web of perception, which is more or less integrated into a waking personality one may discover that one falls from one step down many steps to another floor of perception entirely. Another may find that there are sudden lifts and drops within dreams. Others may find that the vision that is so dearly desired that is realer than the day-to-day -day illusion becomes less penetrable as one moves closer to it. All of these are examples of what the essences and energies and entities that seem to block your path are. It is a great challenge to see yourself as more than a waking personality, to realize that your boundaries are not those of your personality or your understanding. It is not necessarily helpful or good news to the seeking entity to find there is not necessarily a continuity in a horizontal sense to one's point of perception. The second part of the query is how may we deal with these distractions, essences, and entities that stand before the seeking self and say, go no further? It is far easier for we call upon the principle of unity, and we would ask each when faced with such visions, essences, entities, and distractions to cease movement, just as one in deep water might cease thrashing about attempting to swim to a shore that cannot be seen, and to come to rest, floating gently being borne by whatever current one is experiencing in terms of types of vibration 
when the effort to extract oneself from the moment of challenge has ceased. When one is empty and unresisting, one may then be in touch with the love that is within that vibration, within that moment, within that nexus. This is important in two ways. Firstly, seekers are possessed with minds, and often the functions of the mind are denigrated in comparison to the forces of intuition and knowing. Yet, in a situation which confronts one as a seeker, when the resistance to the resistance has ceased, when there is a peace within the perceiving self, even in the face of this challenge, one may, using one's mind, ask to find the love in that moment. One may even use this question as a mantra. One may, in one's own way, create the desire to know. Where is the love in this moment? One has stopped the momentum of that which is fearsome. One has come to a halt. One is therefore able to originate a new momentum and create the desire to see the love in the vibration of that moment. Secondly, it is the glory and the truth of each seeker that the love in that moment is himself. To open the self amidst challenge to the awareness of love is to open the self to the universe that is love. It is not through an act of will that one becomes able to offer love to a fearsome entity, that one is seeing or to an attitude of mind that burns with hectic fire keeping him from the peace he can taste and feel. There is a releasing of all levels of perception that comes to one who desires to know the self. At the point where that question becomes a point of entry, then the seeker may allow love to flood the self so that one is marinated in love, drenched, permeated, and filled with love. And as one feels the self as love, from this point of perception, it becomes the act of simplicity itself to love the unlovable, to embrace the wolf that bites. Many are those who have at various times in their incarnation damaged their light bodies, or as this instrument would say, their energy bodies, and therefore have created those points of entry which are perforce unguarded. To work on this aspect of the challenges of entities and essences which seem to be a roadblock or a point of fear or distraction is to call upon a certain kind of help. Can you imagine, my friends, the uncounted entities who have never left the love and light of the one infinite creator to enter into illusion? Many call them angels or the Elohim. Whatever their title, they function as part of the created principle and they are able, when asked, to enter into the healing of light bodies. Therefore, we ask each, in times of challenge, to call upon that help and then to know that healing is taking place. Offer those moments as a daily practice ask for the help and giving gratitude for the help. Although the creation is that which is mysterious beyond all telling, its essence is love, and its interacting parts are all made of love. Let this be the basis of your approach to those times of challenge and resistance that you shall indeed meet again and again, whoever you are, whatever your path. It is a natural part of movement through the density of choice, the density of dynamic opposition, only within yourself, girded with faith, that all is well, can you open yourself to love. In a session in 2006, Jim asks, in order to choose the light, we must first acknowledge and understand the darkness. That is the only way we can consciously exercise our free will. The question concerns the nature of the darkness. There has been much given about negative entities that bring disease and disharmony to those seeking the light. But is there a separate class or type of negative entity that brings disease and disharmony to service to self beings as well? Are the service to self beings themselves what have been called dark angels or demons that have been cast out? Could you offer any spiritual principles that would help me to think about this? We are those of Quo and are aware of your query, my brother. We would entangle your question a bit before we respond fully. For we find there are two questions where you intended only one. Therefore, we would remove one question from the other so we may answer cleanly. The situation in which an entity might help to create illness within a spirit in incarnation is rare. There are such situations, however, a psychic greeting is able only to accentuate pre-existing faults, or as this instrument would say, chinks in the armor of light. For instance, in this entity, the chink in her armor that created the possibility of a rash of unfortunate falls and difficulties that have resulted in this instrument having a broken ankle and other difficulties, bruises and so forth, was her tendency to be forgetful 
and not to be aware of what she is or what she's doing because of the fact that she's thinking about something else. It is a habit and a pattern of absent-mindedness that this instrument has carried since birth and has accepted because it is actually has physical roots and birth defects that have to do with her amygdala. Her eye was pushed into the amygdala at birth and therefore the connection between long-term and short-term memory was severed at that time. She has compensated well, but she has an inborn tendency towards faulty memory and absent-mindedness. And so when she was indeed greeted lately in an attempt to distract her from those good works in which she was engaged, the target of opportunity was her physical body. And so she has sustained what she calls dings to it. It has not dismayed her or distracted her. Nevertheless, this is a good example of the kind of ingress into physical health that an outside force has. It is not great. The general cause of disharmony within a body system is disharmony with an entity's thoughts. There are very toxic thought patterns that can be guaranteed to result in a less than optimal physical configuration. Thoughts of fear drive out peace. Thoughts of love build up inner peace. It is as simple and as challenging as that. As your mind, so shall your body go. That which you worry about, that which you fear, you could call up to you. We would encourage you to watch your thoughts like a hawk. When you find them becoming toxic, ask yourself to stop thinking along those lines. Ask yourself how your highest and best self would approach the situation that it has you in worry and fear. When that comes to you of what the highest and best would be, try it on, my friend. See if it feels more comfortable to you, more profitable, more skillful, and more helpful than your fearful thoughts. This is the kind of choice which does not look like a choice of polarity, but is. The choice of fear is the choice to have life be about you. The choice of love is the choice to have life be about the one infinite creator. And in 1980, they asked, is there also one known in the Bible as Satan that also lives? Quote says, there is my brother an entity in people's hearts known as Satan to them. However, this entity is part of the illusion of your density. The reality or seeming reality of evil is natural to those who dwell in your polarized density as the darkness. The vibration in which you live is made up of many pairs of opposites and the interplay between these causes movement. To live is to move and the principle which has been called Satan is something within consciousness which repels and thus causes growth and movement. There are some drawn to the negative or evil principle who may be said perhaps to be fond of the satanic and these people are truly not pleasant. They simply have chosen a path of separation from the Father, a path of belief in the importance of the self. This leads such people to desire power, especially over others. Those polarized towards the good desire power over themselves so that they may better serve others. There is no being, known as Satan, on your physical plane, nor has there ever been. However, The vibrational principle from which this concept received its ancient name is a thought form which is a reality of your illusion. We wish to distinguish this from the reality of the one known as Jesus or as we know him Amira who is an entity who lives and dwells in love. He is a thought form only to those who do not realize that he is a real being. The one known as Satan is merely a shadow, the shadow of evil thoughts. Given fear enough, evil thoughts can do harm can cause fear and pain and anguish. This power is given to the satanic principle only through the fear of the one who is feeling the difficulty. There is no reality to the fear, and thus it is said, love casteth out fear. The one principle called Satan is a lonely and sad thought form, and we would say to you, accept this principle as part of yourself, as that within you, if you will, which spurs you on to growth, to new understandings, and to desire for truth. Love this entity, therefore, and take all strength from this mere shadow. Question, is there a war between Quo and Latwi and the ones you mentioned? I am Latwi and we understand your question. You are speaking of what this instrument knows as Armageddon. This battle has been underway for some time and in truth is proceeding towards its conclusion. However, only the shadows of its fierce antagonisms reach the physical plane, for this is a battle between light and darkness. There are many, many hosts of those in the service of the one infinite creator. We ourselves are in the service of the infinite creator and have formed a confederation in order to do just what we are doing now. To speak to those who desire whatever knowledge we may have to share, these forces of light of whom we count ourselves 
a humble and unworthy number stand as it has been said in your holy works in the armor of light we are given power first from the creator who is beyond light and darkness and from whom we derive love secondly from those upon your planet who are praying meditating living to be loving sincere understanding and valuing the good and the beautiful we face those of us on the physical the etheric and cosmic forces which derive their substance from the belief and separation from the creator and from each other unfortunately many of your peoples their tempers sharpened through many many generations of wars and territorial arguments contribute to the negative quality of the forces of darkness anger intense frustration and the negative emotions associated with greed and envy add also to the aid that the etheric thought forms that our forces of darkness may draw upon and so the battle plan stands arrayed but whereas we have one creator to guide us and one great truth to sustain us the forces of darkness will always be scattered for they do not trust one another but wish only to have power over one another as well as over all else therefore as soon as enough of the people of your planet can stand behind us or merely messengers of light the battle gallantly joined will be over for this harvest and the harvest will be complete and those who stood in the light will avail themselves of the light we feel very positive about the coming of this harvest for it pleases us that many have turned to that light and to that love to seek understanding even as the world seems to polarize itself more and more to negativity and separation yet you will find more and more of those people whom you personally know beginning to seek in some form of spiritual truth the light and the love of the father thus this battle whatever occurs upon your plane has already been joined and it is fought with the heart and the minds and the spirits of mankind not with their physical bodies this is a great lesson to learn M. Quo, and as it appears that we have squeezed the last query from the tube of queries utilizing this instrument's imagery we shall again thank you for allowing us to join your circle of seeking and to express our thoughts and opinions that have been helpful to us in our own journey of seeking at this time we shall take our leave of this instrument leaving each in the love and in the ineffable light of the one infinite creator Adonai my friends Adonai thus concluding our discussion of demons and negative entities we really have discussed this multiple times on the podcast but we could never discuss it too much a lot of people contact me and are concerned and feel like they've been attacked by negative entities people have told me that they are attacked by demons and i can only tell you i believe you i understand where you're coming from check out my episode on methods of psychic self-defense but relax and know that you are god you are all powerful and by sending love you can depolarize this entity and they deserve your love find the negative entity and blast it with love and the more and more we do this you can even apply it to people in your life there are people that are acting just like negative entities and demons and they do terrible things and it's easy for you to hate them to despise them but also try to send them love because maybe that's all they need they're inflicted with a disease it's a misunderstanding a separation from the creator and that separation is the problem the separation from love they need love once they feel that love they'll remember what it was because they are you and if you are this demon going around doing stupid stuff being controlled by another entity or manipulated or scared or fearful or evil or angry wouldn't you want somebody to blast you with love if it could transform you if you didn't know about the power of love if you've been separated from so long you forgot you were there you were all powerful you can take this love within your heart and blast it to anybody to anything and completely change it we'll definitely return to quo as we always do but i would love to get your impressions of demons and how to handle them have you experienced the demon have you experienced the negative entity what practices do you use to protect and cleanse your house do you use crystals do you use salt do you use garlic is there any rituals that you use do you use fire and candles do you use love do you use the techniques that we've discussed with quo 
It's always super interesting. It's interesting at the end we find out that there is a war going on and you can tell it's a positive entity because they're not telling you that the world's going to end. They're going to tell you that they're fighting against those who are separated from the love. So it's a simple understanding. You have a nuclear weapon against any negative entity and that's the love in your heart pushed out through the pure heart that's open. So open your heart and cleanse your negative energies. Open your energy body. Balance your chakras. Don't give them a way in. And just remember, the choice of fear is a choice. It's the choice to have life about you. But the choice of love is the choice to have life be about the one infinite creator. This is a transition and a spiritual choice that you're learning to make. And these entities are helping you to make this choice. You can find all episodes of The Reality Revolution at therealityrevolution.com. And welcome to the reality revolution.